What's going on everyone? Welcome to the fourth part of our Revit tutorial. And today we're going to go over working on schedules, creating room tags, and also making callouts in your floor plans or in your sections. If you haven't seen parts one, two, and three, I recommend that you go to part one and follow up from there. Otherwise, if you're just interested in learning about schedules, making tags, and doing callouts in a floor plan, you're more than welcome to just follow along with this tutorial as well. So we're going to flip over to the screen right now. So first things first, you're going to open your project, go on file and open your last save project from the previous tutorial. And then what we're going to do is we're going to work with tags. So what a tag does essentially is that it describes either a fixture or an object or a room and tells you what the function of that object is in the floor plan, or it can even denote how many variations you have in a certain type of fixture or object. For example, we're going to start off by adding door tags. So the way we're going to do this is from the architectural tab, we're gonna go on annotate. And in the annotate category, we're going to direct our attentions to tag. So there are two ways to tag your objects in your project. So if we click tag by category, it doesn't matter what type of object you're clicking on, it's going to create a tag, especially for that object. So even if I was to click on my door, or my window is going to create a tag that matches that object. But if you're working on a larger scale project and a larger floor plan, tagging each individual instance in your project might be very tedious and time consuming. So what we're going to do, we're going to hit escape and rather we're going to go on tag all. So for tag all, the way it works is that you select the category that you want to have identified in your project. Here, we're going to start off with door tags and we're going to check it and we're not gonna have the leader on. Leader basically points to where the object is. Let me demonstrate briefly. So anytime I drag this, there will be a leader line pointing to the door and this is not necessary for this project because we're going to have everything in close proximity. So make sure leader is checked off and we're going to click door tags and we're going to hit okay. And you can drag everything accordingly so that it's not impeding too much in your drawing so we can move everything accordingly and what each of these numbers are telling you the first thing is telling you is the order in which everything was added to the project so this was my first door that I added to the project this was the second door I added to the project and so on and so forth but then it also quantifies how many of that type of door that I have so because I haven't changed the door in the project yet all the doors are the same, so it's counting in that order. So for this door particularly, this might be the second or third door if you have the same scheme that I drew, but this is something I had to replace this wall when I was doing some edits when I was trying to flip it because this wall didn't want to flip. So I had to just redraw this wall and add the door again. So that's why this is the 11th door. So this is also calculating all the doors in the entire project. So it's not only just looking at this floor, it's looking at the upper levels as well. If I was to change this door to a different type of door, let's click on the door and let's go on, let's scroll through here. Let's actually try importing a door. We're going to go on insert, load family, This single glass door looks very nice, so we could import it from here. We're going to take every type, hit OK, bring it into the project, and now we're going to select this door and we're going to replace it. So this seems pretty good. So now this change, you can see that the frame changed a bit. Now we're going to also replace these two doors with the one I just imported. So let's click that. So just wanted to replace those doors because the front doors should not be the same type of doors that we have in the interior as well. And now what we're going to do is the same process except we're going to do it for windows. So we're gonna click tag all and we're going to select window tag. We're going to hit okay. And now we have each of our window tags. 
But the difference between the window tags and the door tags is that the number given to each window is the same because this is the same type of window. And if you look at each of these, this is how you're going to identify how many windows you have of that type in your project. So let's just fix this up a little bit. We can get, actually we'll leave the EQ sign. We'll just, so we'll get rid of the EQ. And now we have each of our tags. So next we're going to work on room tags. So your intuition may be to go on tag all and select room tags and just hit okay. But as you can see, this is not going to work. And the reason why is that we have to define what is a room in the project. So by going to the architecture tab, first thing that we need to do is click room. So what this does is that it identifies each area of a room as you can see in the preview. Let me show you how this works. So we click room and you can apply the tag into your room like this and that's how it identifies the room. But what happens if you have a big open floor plan such as what I have right here? The problem is that Revit is going to read this as one giant room rather than a series of different spaces. So the way you can mitigate that is by going on room separator. So when you have room separator, you define the boundaries of the room so that when you add your room tag, it's going to only identify that space within the boundary as a room. So let's begin to draw it. So we drew our first boundary. So now let's get the tag by going back to architecture and let's click room. And now this entire room is going to be identified as one room. Let's just put our tag right here. And so we want to repeat that process for every room by creating boundary, drawing these boundary lines so that Revit will identify that as an individual room. So let's hit undo because we want this space to be identified as our first room. So let's begin to divide these spaces up. We're gonna go back on the architecture tab and we're gonna click room separator. So now that we've divided our room, let's click room and let's begin to identify these spaces. And with that, we have each of our rooms identified and we could just double click on it and change the name. We'll call this dining room. And now we have our door, window, and room tags. There's more you can do with these tags. You can also make tags for your staircase, for example. And actually, we forgot one room over here. So if you're like me, having gigantic tags in the middle of your floor plan, you might be a little bit bothered by it. But the good news is that each of these room tags are actually a Revit family. So what that means is that we can actually edit the sizes of the text. So what we can do is double click. And when you double click into the tag, you're going to get this window. So now we just have to click on it and we go on edit type. And what we're going to do is duplicate it. So we can begin to change the size. Let's call this bold 1 16th. Cause we want it to be about half the size. So we're going to change that to 1 16th of an inch. Let's see, bold, yeah, bold sounds good. Um, we could leave it italic, or we could even do it italic. It's completely up to you. Font size, Arial, you can change your font if you like. Let's do something like, do we have Leto in here? Uh, we have Century Gothic. Let's change it to a Century Gothic text. Hit OK, and boom, that looks much better. And we could do the same thing with this one hit edit type, duplicate, 
and you're going to change it from 1 8th. Let's also make this 1 16th. Or should it be 1 32nd? No, 1 16th is actually good. And we're going to change it to 1 16th. And we're also going to change the font from Arial to Century Gothic. Hit OK. And now with this, so you don't have to show square footages, but you can show square footage. I'm still going to edit the tag. Let's also, we actually should have a duplicate already, the 1 16th right here. And then we're going to change this to Century Gothic, actually perfect. Hit OK. And we're just going to leave it as that. Let's just repeat that quickly for the last one. 1 16th, Century Gothic, fantastic. And we hit load into project and make sure it's your project selected in case you have multiple Revit windows open. Hit OK. And what we want to do is overwrite the existing. So now each of our tags is going to adjust to that size. And this looks a lot better, a lot cleaner, in my opinion, more professional too. So now that we've finished each of our tags here on the first level, you want to repeat the process on every level. And it's the same idea if you have a wide open space, just use the room divider, go in the architecture tab, go on room separator and define the boundaries of the room. And then you're able to go on room at your tags. And of course, go to annotate and you can either tag by category or tag all and specify what you want to have tagged and then have it tagged into your floor plan and just rearrange it. So I'm going to jump forward to after I've tagged the second level and the attic story. But one quick thing, just in case you ran into this issue and you cannot even find a tag in your project, one thing you might have to do is actually go to insert load family. So you might have to import the tags manually. So if you scroll down to annotation, that folder, you should be able to find the tags that matches appropriately to what you're trying to do. You have the room tags here and you also have window tags. So take a moment, pause the video. If you had that issue, not having the tags, import the tags into the project and then you'll be able to continue in the video. So once you have each of your levels tagged, now we can move on to the next step and that is creating a schedule. A schedule is a chart generated by Revit which contains information which specifies quantities of certain objects in your project, material, and also variation in manufacture, dimensions, and all these things. And there are many different types of schedule you can make. You can make a schedule just for your doors, identifying all the different doors in your project. You can make a schedule for plumbing, identifying the different plumbing fixtures in your project, even a schedule for your windows, etc. So we're going to start off by doing something really simple and we're going to do a door schedule. The tab we have to go to is our view tab. And then after we go on view tab, we want to click schedules. So we're going to go on schedule slash quantities. Now from here, you have to pick what type of category you want your schedules to denote. So we want our schedules to focus on doors. So we're going to scroll down, click doors and any project you're working on, unless you're working on existing conditions and want to quantify what's already there, you will pick existing. Otherwise you're going to click new construction and we'll hit OK. And now you get to select all the different specifications for this category. For example, do we want to know how many doors we have? You select doors and then you click this arrow to add the parameter. If you want to remove a parameter anytime, just click the red arrow, remove par parameters and you can get rid of it. We definitely want to have the count. We definitely want to know what finishes we have. The level it's on. The thicknesses of the doors because it varies because we have two types of doors, the width of the door, the mark, the type mark of the door, the rough width, which is the width of the door without the door frame. We definitely want the rough height as well. And we can also add the regular height to this frame material. And I believe this is a good amount of parameters to describe the doors that we have in our project. 
And filter is if you want to limit your schedule based on, let's say, the finish or the levels, for example. If I only want to talk about the doors on the ground level, for example, I'll have that. Um, we're not going to have any filters. We want to see everything. And same thing, we're not going to group everything. And we're going to itemize every instance so we can see every occurrence of a door on each level that has this type of finish, this type of dimension, and we want to see each and every one of those things. You can always edit the title, the header, all these things, but we're not going to worry about that too much right now. Let's just hit OK to take a look at our schedule. And now here is our door schedule. So this begins to describe where the door is located, the thicknesses of the door, the width of the door. And you can see that we have several types of specific doors for our bedroom. For our bedrooms, we have the same type of door, but on the ground floor, we have a variation in the doors. And we also have the bifolding doors for the closets and all these things. So schedules are so important when you want to quantify information or do want to describe instances in your project where you have a set of fixtures that may change or vary based on the floor or based on its room, its location in the house. So knowing how to do a schedule when working in a firm is also very important because keeping track of quantities, dimensions is just a good way to make sure the project is not going to be over budget or how certain things can fit in certain areas. If it's the appropriate height, if modifications have to be made and even keeping track of manufacturers and all these things. So you might notice some categories are blank for certain categories. We have to input the information or the Revit family does not have the information embedded in the object that describes what its finishes are or the frame materials, but that's completely fine. But now you have just like a basic idea of how to begin to create a schedule. And even after you create your schedules, you can always go back in and edit some of the parameters. You can remove parameters. You can add parameters. Let's say you need to also know the assembly name. You can add that or you can even remove certain things from the project if it's no longer an important variable. So likewise, you can do the same thing for bathrooms. Let, let's just go through another example. Let's do this one more time. So we're in the view tab. Let's click, click schedules. Let's click schedules and quantities. And we are going to select, let's select something like plumbing fixtures. So plumbing fixtures, we're going to select the level we want type we want to have a count, the family, the mark. And this is pretty good for this example. And we're not going to change anything else. We're just going to hit OK. And now we have our plumbing fixtures. So our plumbing fixtures begin to describe things such as our vanities, our toilets, and where it's located on what floor. And this is really important, especially when you're going to work with other contractors, understanding where certain things are going in your design. You can always draw it on the floor plan, but these specifications allows the subcontractor to actually know what you're actually working with so they can better know how to install these things. And I feel like that's enough for schedules. Let's move on to callouts. So we're going to go on schedule and quantities. We're going to hit escape twice and then we're going to click on any one of our floor plans. Let's go to the first floor plan. So if you're still on the view tab right here, you're going to see two things, section and call outs. So before we make a call out, I think it will be really nice to make a section. So let's take the section line and I think it will be really interesting to have a section running this way and this way. So let's make this our first section line and let's flip it, have it our section going in this direction. So you're going to notice once you create a section, you're going to have your section over here and you can click here to view your section. And that doesn't look too bad actually. So let's go back to that floor, the ground floor plan. So you might notice that this is blank and don't worry about that for now. We're going to get a little bit into this in the final tutorial, but for now you can just make your sections. We can also have one going this way as well, or let's actually, let's actually cut it because we have a terrace and then we have that room going here. I think this will be an interesting place. 
it's like we're cutting right through this and then we're going to flip it this way so we have our sections and let's head over let's say section number one let's say we want to have a detail of this area so what we're going to do is click the call out button and we're going to click reference under view and we create our call out so then this is our call out window that we just drew. And basically this call out window for this section is going to take us to a drafting view, which you should now see under sections down here. And we can click here and it's going to be section one call out. And then over here, we can get into detail and start making a wall section for this area where we could specify the layers and we can make other specifications as well. But this is where we're going to end this tutorial and we're going to pick up from here, working on creating details from the call out in the following tutorial. So first things first, please save this project. If any of you have any questions or anything we covered so far or anything you want me to cover in a future Revit tutorial or even other tutorials tutorials as well. Feel free to leave a comment below. I'm going to read and reply to each and every one of you to the best of my abilities. So I'll see you all in the next video.